This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and we're reviewing the next thing in gym equipment. No, just kidding. This is the HP Omen X. This is a 17.3 inch gaming laptop with a classy chassis, sort of reminiscent of the 15 inch Omen that they made many years ago. And then they switched to making a kind of a more plasticky, less expensive Omen. And now the Omen X is the new Highline offering. It goes up against the Alienware 17 R4, among others. It is a pretty heavy laptop. It may be, relatively speaking, for a powerhouse gaming laptop, sort of slim and, and nice looking, but it is almost 11 pounds, and, which is about just under five kilograms. So this is one of the heavier ones on the market. And not to be outdone just by that, it comes in its own suitcase. Look at the size of this. I, I don't know about you, but man, I could pack light and probably go five days or a week if I put my clothes inside of this. Now, HP does love giant boxes. Even the little Spectre 13 comes in a box that is enormous relative to the size of the laptop. So it's the usual thing. You get a nice inner presentation box that's more pretty and all that sort of thing. Anyway, we're gonna look at it now. So the HP Omen X17 is, well, a 17.3 inch gaming laptop and it's their high-end offering. Not just the chassis looks more classy and all that sort of thing, but it's got high-end components going after the Alienware 17 R4, the Acer Predator 17 inch Highline model, the MSI GT73 VR Titan Pro. That's the more affordable version of the Titan Pro, the 73 and, and so on. You get the idea, but the price isn't too bad. They're, they're like undercutting Alienware by a bit. bit. Now, granted, both HP and Dell are really big on having sales and discounts and coupons on their websites. So prices can ping pong around a little bit there, but for something with the Intel Core i7-7820 HK, that's the overclockable CPU in here, and an NVIDIA GTX 1080, uh, this one here with some other nice components is around $23 to $2,500, depending on where you pick it up and so on. Now, ours were, was provided by Computer Upgrade King, otherwise known as Cuck. USA. Don't blame me, folks. Uh, there it is right there. You can see their name. And they're one of those folks uh, that has a website where you can buy all sorts of gaming laptops and they'll do customization for you if you want better or faster M2 SSDs, different hard drive configurations, that sort of thing. Uh, for this model, I haven't seen them offer any repasting uh, services. And you know, it probably could actually use a little repaste maybe on it. So there's that. So that's who they are. They sell directly on their website and through Amazon. We'll have some links down below. And of course, there's HP's own website. And sometimes when HP has sales, they're the best place to get stuff, though they don't always have all the different models in stock. Anyway, that said, this is certainly a more adult looking gaming laptop, though it's still going to stand out. And the backside too is equally as ooh la la. Now notice there's a little clear window there. It, you really don't get a view of very particularly interesting components. They're, they're just doing that because it's kind of cool. One nice thing though is with Omens of Past, people complained righteously and rightly that they were hard to open up for upgrades. And gosh, gaming laptops is just the kind of peeps who actually want to usually upgrade their components or repaste their CPU and GPU and all that sort of thing. So now just unscrew the Phillips head screws on the bottom and boom, you have access to the internals. And we will take a look at those. This is a metal casing. It's aluminum and it, it's quite rigid and yeah, it's good looking stuff. The only bad thing is, oh my God, does it show fingerprints? Like there's no tomorrow. Yeah, you're going to have to clean this thing all the time with a damp rag and a little uh, hard rubbing with that microfiber cloth to keep it looking pretty. Now, it's not just a pretty face with, with pretty high-end brains inside that's only going to be beat by something like the Origin PC that we recently reviewed that has a desktop CPU inside. If you want something that isn't that power demanding, doesn't take two power supplies, you know, your normal-ish gaming laptop, well, this one is it. And one of the things I like is you get a mechanical keyboard. Now, I'm actually not a fan of desktop mechanical keyboards. The travel, to me, seems very old-fashioned. The switches can be kind of noisy, but this one is just right. Goldilocks right. It's You hear the clicks. But it's not super, super noisy. You probably won't absolutely derange somebody else in the room when you're typing or gaming or whatever. The, the rollover action on this is pretty good. And 2.5 millimeters of travel is good. It's not insanely deep. So I really found I liked it a lot. And I missed having it when I didn't anymore. It's, it's a very nice keyboard. Now, HP has a, their Omen utility that lets you do things that are functional, like overclocking to make it easy so you don't have to go into the BIO. So it's considered overclocking for newbies. And they actually use Intel XTU and let you do benchmarking and dry runs and all that stuff. But as you can see also, 
they have all sorts of color programmability, including the usual effects that are in these days, like starlight patterns, breathing, uh, and omen X when you type a key, it shoots out the omen. And even though they don't list it as being per key RGB backlight, they list it as eight zone, you actually can program each key on this. The only complaint I had is that sometimes it seemed to pick a, a program on its own and just suddenly be doing some different light show than I had picked on it. Go figure. You can see, you know, this has HP's own really distinctive look. I, I, I can't say that they've copied this from anybody. It really does hail back to that 15.6 inch omen that was cool before the Dell XPS 15 got as cool as it is now or hot on the market. Uh, but there are a few things that are obviously aimed at Alienware now. Thankfully, no more, you know, all ports on the back, which is something they used to do with the really pretty Omen of old. You do have some on the side, but there's a kind of not enough USB 3.0 ports for my money for this kind of desktop replacement laptop. I was really surprised that we didn't have more of those. You get, you go, we got one on the back, you got one on each side, and I wanted some more of that. But they have the hinge forward design, which Alienware made into a thing. And well, that's fine. The, the hinges that, that actually do hold it up are interesting looking enough. They're kind of designer style. They're functional. They hold it up. And you're not going to probably take this on a bus and you're not going to worry about hinge bounce. There is a little bit of hinge bounce. And it's got that thin kind of flat design like the Alienware laptops do. And they particularly try to make it look thinner. You'll notice on the side profile there that the side that you see looks pretty thin. But of course, that's because there's an undercut and a bevel and it's actually quite a bit thicker. Anyway, the styling is quite nice on it. Wish for a few more USB legacy ports. You do have two USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports. Good times for that. And an HDMI. And the display options are pretty good on this. There's the full HD 120 hertz display with G-Sync that we have. That's an IPS display. So very high refresh rate, but it's IPS. So the response times are not going to be as fast as TN. However, you're getting the better viewing angles and typically somewhat better contrast. Uh, the color gamut on this is up, it's up there with anything else in the $1,000 and above Ultrabook category. And not even all gaming laptops actually do this well. So it's perfectly acceptable. When I looked at the display, I didn't say, ooh la la, this is fantastic. But then I have been using a Titan Pro with a wide color gamut TN fast refresh panel on it. But it's pretty nice. But if that ain't good enough for you, they have 144 hertz option. And given the power in this, that actually could make some sense. Because running any modern demanding game right now, you can peg it at 120 frames per second easily to match that 120 hertz refresh display using G-Sync on it on Ultra at 1080p native resolution. So you might want to move it up to a faster refresh rate if you're a first person shooter kind of person. But if that ain't good enough, there's also a 4K display. And this is capable of some 4K gaming. It has enough horsepower. Not every game and certainly not at Ultra. But medium to sometimes high settings, depending on the game, it is possible. Or of course, you can plug it into an external monitor too, because we do have monitor ports. Synthetic benchmarks are exactly where we would expect for something with this kind of high-end kit inside, as you can see on screen right now. The temperatures when benchmarking were perfectly respectable. Not the, I didn't see CPUs go, cores go beyond 80 centigrade, which is quite good for some demanding 3D benchmarks. When gaming, and you'll see this for the gaming footage, we've got a shot there that'll show you how hot it can get when you're gaming. Now that's playing at ultra, at full HD resolution, without overclocking, but without undervolting either. So I was a little surprised to see CPU temperatures in the upper 80s to 90 or so because it's a, it's a thick enough chassis, you know? But then again, if you do undervolt a little bit, even if you overclock, I noticed that, you know, overclocking with a little bit of undervolting, the temperatures don't get any hotter than that. So it's not that bad. You could always repaste it if you wanted to. It's not alarming. It's not terrible. There was no thermal throttling whatsoever. So it's not a terrible situation. And given the, the attempt at a thinning kind of design here, it's certainly doing better than Alienware, where we sometimes do see thermal throttling going on and taking that beast apart to repaste is just a nightmare. So this one is easier to deal with in that respect. So I'd give it a pass. Noise level, really not above 56 dB when gaming. That's very respectable. I mean, they really could spin the fans louder, in my opinion. It's not that loud at all for a gaming laptop, which is nice. And surface temperatures are never burning hot on this. Certainly on a chassis this large, they shouldn't be either. You have both Ethernet on here and you have Wi-Fi. Surprisingly, it's Realtek Wi-Fi. Uh, I would have expected something like Killer, that's the industry standard, or Qualcomm Athros or Intel, but it it does the job, so hey, that's okay. Like I said, you got Ethernet on board should you need that. Uh, so overall, good solid components. But if you want to save some money, there is the good old 
old-fashioned core, not old-fashioned really, but Intel's 7th generation Core i7-7700 HQ processor. That's a non-overclockable version, which I think is plenty fine for most folks, given the fact that you're dealing with a lot of thermal constraints in laptop size packages. Overclocking, you know, it'll get you five frames per second in some games. Most games really care more about the GPU. Of course, you can overclock the GPU on this if you want to, and the RAM, even up to 2800 megahertz, DDR4 RAM. So, yeah, but anyway, if you want to go with that regular old Core i7-7700 HQ and a GTX 1070, starts around $1,800, so not so bad there. Of course, that doesn't include the M2 boot SSD, so you start adding stuff on, and probably where you want to be with this is in the $2,100 and up for nice configurations. Well, how about battery life and charger? This is your usual 330 watt charger. However, it's been customized. It's a little baby omen, right? I think actually that's kind of cool. Although if this fits in your backpack or whatever, that's for you to decide versus the more rectangular design. Uh, it's, it is what it is. It looks about the size and weight of a Mac mini though. Inside the laptop is a 99 watt hour six cell battery. That is the largest that they can make and still be allowed, or you can still be allowed to take this on an airplane. That's the reason for that limit of 99 watt hours. So pretty beefy battery here. We have G-Sync though. You know, we're not going to be using any switchable graphics going on here to use Intel graphics. So battery life, uh, not when not gaming, is about three and a half hours, which is actually not that bad. Some gaming laptops only manage two. So big battery in there. That helps. To open this up is really delightfully simple. Just remove the visible Phillips head screws, the small Phillips head screws, and you yank up starting from right over here. And this is actual ventilation here. This is, these are the air intake areas. This is just decorative, but you can see light through here probably. And so it's a lot of air intake there, and it exhausts air through the sides and through the rear. So that's how that works. Do not lay this on the bed when you're gaming. In other words, you'll strangle it. So we put that aside, and there we have two RAM slots. So maximum RAM would be 32 gigs if you got two 16 gig modules. And right here we have our M2 SSD slots. We've got slots for two SSDs. That's pretty decent right there. We've obviously got our boot SSD in there. PCIe, NVMe, if you get, go with the SSD option, you go straight to the fast SSDs. The hard drive bay is over here, and typically it's a one terabyte 7200 RPM hard drive. And typically, I think also the recovery partition is on the hard drive and not the SSD, but I'm not sure. HP changes those things up. Battery over here, big and large. Stereo speakers over here. Now it's going to be delightful to Alienware. 17 customers say if you tried an R4 and you decided you were going to go to hell and die first before you could ever take that apart and repaste it, look how easy this is. Even the Acer Predator is not the most fun thing to open up and get to, to get to the CPU and GPU to repaste it. So here we have two very large fans, nice size fans right there, good quality ones. And here is our heat sink plates for the CPU and the GPU all easy to get to. So isn't that nice? If you want to clean out your fans, no problem. If you decide you want to repaste this and see if you can get it to run cooler, you can do that. The only thing that's not so easy to get to is the Wi-Fi card under here, but typically most people do not replace their Wi-Fi card, so I suppose there's that. So one expects big sound with big gaming laptops, right? <laughs> HP, I don't know, and they're banging all of a sudden audio. They just always go for not particularly loud or not particularly full stuff. Uh, usually in laptops, gaming laptops of this class, you get a subwoofer, but not here. You get stereo speakers, and they're pretty decent, but you know, you notice the absence of the subwoofer when you're gaming, especially, say, one of the Far Cry games. You know how the opening always goes, whoa. Well, this sounds like, Bleh. Bleh. It needs a subwoofer. That's a shame. So that's the HP Omen 17, complete with its own custom-looking Mac Mini-sized power supply. And, well, this is a lot easier to hold than the Omen 17, uh, certainly. But you know what? They did a really nice job here, actually. I know a lot of people want a more style-in gaming laptop, and that doesn't mean liberal use of plastics and reds and blacks and all that sort of thing. So this one has a kind of, I don't know, a little bit like, you know, they're hoping for the Museum of Modern Art edgy design, literally going back to the older Omen days. It does the job. It looks nice. It is out there. It is unique looking. It is flashy still, certainly, but at least in a quiet way for those of you who might want to carry it around. I don't think this is the size laptop most people are going to be carrying to the executive meeting anyway, or even to class. It's really meant for so you can move from room to room inside your house, 
bring to land parties, play with your friends, that sort of thing. And it does the job well. And admirably, I have to say, the cooling overall is pretty good. They have beat Alienware on that front. You don't have to go through all sorts of hassles and, and all that repasting thing just to stop it from thermal throttling. Even if you get the overclockable CPU model like we have here in the GTX 1080, it could certainly run cooler like my MSI Titan Pro, the GT73 VR, which is less expensive, less expensive Titan Pro. That one has amazing cooling, right? But it doesn't look as classy a chassis as this, and the price is nice on it, so I get why you might want one of these. I wouldn't mind having one of these. That mechanical keyboard? Mm. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, and thumbs up if you like this vid.